So chapter one, matter, measurement, and problem solving. And there's some interesting little quotes that the author puts at the beginning of each chapter. For this chapter, uh, it's a quote from Albert Einstein. The most incomprehensible thing about the universe is that it is comprehensible. And the slides aren't advancing. Of course they're not, because it's the first day. No? Great. Pause. So what do you think? And you don't need to answer this out loud. What do you think is the most important idea in all of human knowledge? There's lots of ideas. The most important one. We could probably spend the rest of the semester debating this. Well, this being a science class, we're going to just talk about science. So limiting ourselves to scientific answers it would probably be this. The properties of matter are determined by the properties of molecules and atoms. Now, this is not something you probably just guess off the top of your head. But this is a really, really important idea. The properties of these bench tops, you know, they're black and shiny and, and hard. The properties of the bench top come from the properties of the individual particles that make up the bench top. If the matter is different, if the, the atoms are different, then the matter is different. So if we want a type of plastic that will biodegrade, we can create that by modifying the molecules that make up the plastic. This gives us a lot of control over matter and enables us to make a lot of these modern materials that are super, super useful. So this is the understanding of matter at the molecular level. And that's a lot of what chemistry is about. Okay, so down here, no. Oh, just all sorts of problems today. Now is it gonna work? There it is, there's my pointer. So down here in the corner, uh, 1.1 atoms and molecules. That's the first section in the textbook. And so each of these lecture videos will uh, be divided into individual sections because if you want to hear about section 1.4, you don't want to have to scrub through the first three sections. So they're all separate videos. So I mentioned atoms and molecules. You need to define what those things are. So atoms are submicroscopic, meaning too small to see with a microscope, particles that constitute the fundamental building blocks of ordinary matter. I think of atoms as being a lot like individual Lego bricks. Okay? Um, my kids have collected a gazillion and a half Lego bricks over the years. And there's all these little different pieces, right? Different colors, different shapes. And then you can put those things together and make stuff. You could make a house, you can make the Death Star, you can make a tree, you can make a gun, right? Some of the boys did that. So those are the atoms, they're the building blocks. Free atoms are, are very rare in nature. Most of them combine with other atoms to make molecules, so little Lego structures. And those we call molecules. So this is um, a representation of a water molecule. So this is an oxygen Lego brick and two hydrogen Lego bricks, and they're stuck together. Lego bricks kind of snap together, and they hold together pretty well. You could think of these as little balls that are kind of super glued together and that makes a molecule so the exact properties of the water molecule determine the properties of water and if we make a very small change to the water molecule we can make some pretty dramatic changes to the properties of the matter so here we have the water molecule, one oxygen atom, two hydrogen atoms. Water is important, right? You need water to live. If you don't get enough water, you'll die. If we add one more oxygen atom to this molecule, two oxygen atoms, two hydrogen atoms, just a little difference. Now this is hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide as a dilute solution is useful for cleaning out wounds. It's antibacterial. In its pure form, if you drank that, it would kill you. So there's this joke. This guy went into a bar, 
and said, I'll have a glass of H2O. Guy comes in after him and says, I'll have a glass of H2O too. So the bar bartender gave him hydrogen peroxide and he died. Yeah, right? Nobody likes my jokes. It's okay. I'm used to it. Small difference in the molecule affects the properties of the matter. It's going to be one of those days. So if we want to understand matter, the substances around us, which is a very useful thing, we have to understand the particles that make them up. And that's the central goal of chemistry. So we could define chemistry as the science that seeks to understand the behavior of matter by studying the behavior of atoms and molecules. Here we have an illustration of two different forms of carbon. Carbon's an element. Um, here is graphite. Um, here we're showing it as pencil lead. Pencil lead actually has no lead in it. It's, it's graphite, it's all carbon. And here we have a diamond. Now, these two substances are very different. Diamonds make great jewelry. They're very hard. They're colorless and clear and very valuable. Graphite not, doesn't make very good jewelry, right? It's slippery and black and soft, but it does make a good pencil lead. So how are these two things both made up of carbon atoms? It all has all to do with how the carbon atoms are connected to each other. In graphite, the carbon atoms are connected in two-dimensional sheets, and they can slide next to each other. So when you pull your pencil across a piece of paper, little layers of it are sliding off and leaving a mark behind. In a diamond, same carbon atoms, but now these carbon atoms are bonded to each other in a three-dimensional pattern. So there's no slipping and sliding. It's one piece that's going to retain its shape. Has big, a big impact on the overall properties of the substance. 